My name is Ekin Barukbashi and I work uh, as research funder for Wellcome Trust. So um, this is not what I have always done in my career path. And I would like to start by giving you a quick overview of um, how actually um, I, like how my career path has unfolded like over the past almost 15 years. And I also would like to share with you perhaps top three highlights over this path, as well as my top three mistakes, because I, I think they're also important. And I really hope that these may somehow inspire some ideas and uh, trigger questions that we can hopefully discuss later on um, during the Q&A session. So I spent my, the majority of my career in academic research and in so-called uh, the wet lab settings. Um, I graduated from my undergrad in genetics at the University of Edinburgh. And at that point in my life, I was very much into cells and uh, and you know uh, genetics and basically model organisms. So everything had to matter at a microscopic level. So uh, with all this love for genetics and cells, I ended up by getting a PhD in cellular biology and more specifically, I worked on insulin signaling pathway in fr fruit fly Drosophila. And then pretty much right after I graduated from my PhD, I started a postdoc at U University College London and I still wanted to keep my beloved model organism, uh, Drosophila, and my signaling pathway, uh, but I started getting more interested in the effect at an organismal level and over populations. So my postdoc research focused on the effect of insulin on aging and lifespan control in Drosophila. And I guess my focus somehow upgraded from the macro level to a macro level because I was then looking at um, longevity in populations. Uh, but I, I remember that at some point throughout my postdoc, I realized that if I was to stay in academia, then that one specific question was probably going to be what I was going to build the rest of my career upon. And it would be very difficult to pivot significantly uh, down the line. And somehow that really didn't sit well with me and with my personality. I really missed having a broader overview over research landscape and having the flexibility to change interest significantly um, whenever I, uh, you know, I, I, my, uh, I, I, I felt that it was needed. And since I was also working at the very much discovery end of things, the impact of the outputs was very hard to observe, which also kind of somehow demotivate, demotivated me. So then I thought uh, about what I needed to change. So I wanted to have a job which allowed me to have a broader overview over biomedical research, shorter timeline to impact, and also something with the people factor that enabled me to network and, and engage and, uh, and basically interact with people. So I applied for a job as portfolio manager at Wellcome, uh, which I was then offered. And I changed my career probably after 10 years in academic research. And, uh, and actually, I also very much recently changed my job from portfolio manager and I, I started working as a data challenges manager with uh, in the same team as you. Um, so uh, somehow even within the research funding landscape, my job very much recently changed. So as part of my current job, I keep a strategic overview of the global health research landscape and with main, my main focus being the health data. I look out for opportunities to advance Wellcome's mission as a funder. And also I create networks, I engage with the research community and other uh, research funding uh, stakeholders. I build partnerships, I enable platforms to improve health globally. And overall, I have to say it is actually um, quite exciting. <laughs> um, so then I guess that, uh, oh, okay. Maybe like one thing I have to add at that point is, um, the kind of somehow the power dynamics I was involved in changed quite a lot as well, ever since I shifted from being a researcher and I started working for a funder. In a way, I was at this end of the spectrum where I was constantly asking for money to fund my research. And now I, I became part of this organization where this kind of decisions are made. And if I'm fully honest, I do actually really enjoy this change in dynamics. <laughs> Um, it, is a, it is an easier place to be, you know, in all honesty. Um, okay, so then when I thought about three highlights from the past 15 years, I think it is really important to acknowledge this intellectual freedom and space for curiosity that academic research has enabled me. I think, I think that's, that's really, that's a, that's, that's a phenomenal opportunity, I have to say. And, and similarly, this kind of analytical skills that one acquires while doing research are so transferable. And I think at that time, 
I was totally underestimating it. But the day that you end up at a kind of a normal business meeting with people and you can use these skills and back up your arguments in a similar way that you would back up your uh, scientific hypothesis with data, you realize that it's actually very transferable and it's actually quite cool to see that. Um, and I think um, the highlight of being a research funder is this ability to influ influence the wider landscape. And that also happens even at a quite junior level. You don't have to be the director of something. Um, and it is nice to see this, this short timeline to impact about something that you really care about. And three things I wish I had done diff differently. I really wish I had had a less linear career path in academic research. In a way, I went from one PA, like from finishing the PhD right into a postdoc. Like, you know, it seemed like everything had to happen uh, pretty quickly. And I think that was a mistake. I think I should have really had a much more outward facing approach to things. Um, and the second thing is, I think it is okay to be picky. Like if someone offers you a interesting job in a good lab, it doesn't mean that you have to take it. You need to think about it in the wider context of um, career progression because it is important. And also, uh, finally, when I was an academic researcher, I really wish I had done more investment into secondary skills and I had thought a little bit broader than just, you know, getting my research done, getting my papers published. I think it would have really helped me. Okay, so I am going to stop here and um, thank you for listening.